Hi class, for my presentation I chose to research Linda Bove, a deaf American actress, and to really focus on the beginning part of her career. Linda Bove was born November 30th, 1945 in Garfield, New Jersey, and she was born deaf to two deaf parents. She began her schooling at the St. Joseph's School for the Deaf in the Bronx, New York, followed by the Marie Katzenbach School for the Deaf in Trenton, New Jersey. She then went on to attend the Gallaudet University, where she had a primary focus in library studies. It was at Gallaudet that her interest in theater really began. She was involved and held leading roles in the productions put on by the university's theater repertoire, and she was also the stage manager for the university's very first all-student cast and crew production. She then graduated in 1968. Upon graduation, she joined the National Theater of the Deaf, or NTD. At the time, it was a new company that was really just looking for actors that wanted to act. It was great because it gave her the opportunity to develop her acting skills and really show the versatility she had as an actor. She went on to spend 10 years with the company and was able to travel throughout the United States as well as overseas in leading roles in their productions. And I've included a link there for you so you can check out more information about the company. It was at this time that she met and married her husband, Ed Waterstreet. They originally met in Gallaudet University, and then upon graduation together, they joined the NTD and traveled the world collaborating on different projects, and they were married in 1970. They really devoted their lives to bringing deaf culture into theater, and in 1991, they would go on to co-found the Deaf West Theater together. Continuing on with her acting career, um, Bove and her husband, as well as other deaf actors, were part of the Little Theater of the Deaf. In the early 1970s, um, they, the company had a goal of making theater of the deaf persons accessible and relevant for children. And they've actually also included a link to their website so you could check out more about them. And they're still in action today, and it's a division of the NTD. At this time, she also began her crossover from the stage and theater to television. Her One of her first big roles was in 1973 on The Search for Tomorrow, which was a soap opera that ran for 35 years. In 1973, she had a 26-week role that received such great public response from everybody. And it was really pivotal for her career because she was one of the very first deaf actresses to have a recurring role in a, in a television series. From then on, she began to uh, make other appearances in primetime TV, but it was one role that really sets her above the rest. And that role was Linda the Librarian of Sesame Street. In 1969, David Hayes, the artistic director and the founder of the NTD, pitched sign language to the show that he had heard of. It was PBS was making a new children's television show. It was called Sesame Street. PBS loved the idea, and Bove was cast in the role as Linda the Librarian of Sesame Street, where she spent eight years as a semi-regular guest performer. In 1977, she went to the producers and asked for more character development. She wanted a full-time role on the show, and once again, they accepted graciously. Now, as easy as it sounds, it didn't come without struggles. The first major struggle was the trouble with lip reading. Writers and producers thought that even though she was deaf, she was able to read lips, which we've learned in class this is not necessarily true at all. And she had to teach them that when you have a puppet that opens, close, opens, close, no non-manual markers, it's impossible for anybody deaf or hearing to understand what they're saying. Her next big trouble came with the fact that she felt her character was really one-dimensional. Um, in an interview that she had with Barbara Harrington in 1991, she explains how she had to teach the writers that I'm more than a deaf person. I have a personality. I think things are funny. I have a sense of humor. I can have a love interest. So she had to teach them how to write her a deaf character and show them that she could be more than the deaf lady on Sesame Street. However, Sesame Street wasn't just about the TV show. Although she spent over 30 years with them performing on their show daily, uh, she was also cast in various made-for-TV movies and specials throughout the years, all the way up through 2005. And I've included a link here to one of the episodes of Sesame Street, Linda Loses Barkley, where she loses her dog on Sesame Street, and the other characters help her find him. A lot was really propelled by Sesame Street. They were able to take her around to uh, schools and children's hospitals, and she was able to teach hearing and deaf children alike how to use sign language and about deaf community. 
That wasn't the only thing, though. In 1980, she came out with her first book, Sign Language Fun, in correlation with Sesame Street. In 1983, the Sesame Street Treasury came out, which was a 15-volume series of books that followed the teachings of Sesame Street. And I actually grew up with those books as a kid. In 1986, she came out with her second book, Sign Language ABCs, and I just bought that on Amazon. Another facet that came from Sesame Street, sort of, was a children's video series, Sign Me a Story. In 1987, Bove, her husband, other deaf actors and interpreters, put together a video series, Sign Me a Story, where they would sign and act out children's stories, such as Little Red Riding Hood and Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, in 1988, they received the Action for Children's Television Award along with the Parents' Choice Video Award. Now, going back into television, in 1980, both held one of my dream roles if I were an actor of the time. In 1980, she was on Happy Days. And not only was she on Happy Days, but she got to star alongside Henry Winkler as none other than Fonzie's girlfriend. The episode titled Allison was season 7, episode 20, and if you get the time to watch the whole thing, I highly recommend it because it really addresses everything we've learned about deaf culture, from how to get someone's attention that's deaf to the grammar of ASL and everything in between. If you don't have the time or desire to watch, I have marked a few pivotal points in the episode. She also starred in 1986 alongside Marley Matlin with Children of a Lesser God. In 2010, she had a recurring role on the TV series Weeds. And in 2016, she is in pre-production for a new movie called Deaf Ghosts. Now, a career like this doesn't come without awards and recognitions. In 1974, she was awarded by the AMITA Award for Outstanding Work in Television. In 1991, she received the honorary degree from Gallaudet University. In 1992, she received the Bernard Bragg Artistic Achievement Award. In 2000, she received the LA Stage Special Ovation Award. And in 2012, the National Association of the Deaf awarded her with the Media Advocacy Award. And although this is just a snippet of the amazing life that Linda Both has held and the amazing career that she has led, um, it really kind of shows how she got started with everything. And if you get time to look more into her, I highly recommend it. She's a fascinating woman. And here's my references. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you.